All right, so I'm going to go over this practice test and kind of walk you through um, the questions in here. <laughs> For those of you that don't uh, have time in class to do it. Um, so um, this is just uh, wave structure stuff. So wavelength uh, is just the distance between two peaks here. So that's wavelength is D. Um, which of these letters represents the amplitude? Uh, that's how tall a wave is, the height of a wave, so that would be C. Uh, which letter above represents the peak itself, the peak, that's A. And which letter represents the trough, the bottom part, which is uh, B, it's B. Uh, the distance between two adjacent or similar points on a wave, so that's the distance between two points, is wavelength, A. How many waves pass by in one second? That's actually your frequency. So that's how fast you're, you're uh, oscillating back and forth. So that's your frequency. The highest point on a wave, that would be your peak or crest, H. The rate at which a wave travels from one place to another. Rate of travel is your velocity, J. All right. Uh, in a blank wave, the particles and wave move perpendicular to one another. When we talk about perpendicular motion relative to the wave and the particles in the wave, we're talking about transverse, E. The amount of time it takes one wave to pass is the period, B. All right. That's the time for just one wave. Not its length, but the time for that one wave to pass. Excuse the instructions. The uh, bus for the girls' soccer team is here. The bus for the girls' soccer team is here. All right, go get go get it, soccer team. <laughs> so, 11. A blank wave is a wave where the uh, wave and particles in the wave move in the same direction. So if they're both moving in the same direction, uh, if they're both moving in the same direction, they're parallel, and that's going to be a longitudinal wave, D. The height of the wave is considered it. So how tall the wave is is the amplitude. And the lowest part of the wave, the bottom part of the wave, is the trough. Trough. That's I. Uh, let's see here. Yes, that is an I. Um, all waves carry blank from one place to another. They're carrying energy. Waves are just carrying energy. Okay. Right. So frequency is represented using the variable. Which one of these variables? Okay. F and the units are... Hertz. Okay. Velocity is represented as a variable v, and the units we use for velocity are meters per second. Okay. Wavelength is represented as a variable using, let's see, wavelength. This one here, lambda, so that's d. And the units for wavelength, that's a length, it's a distance. So we measure that in meters, h. The period is represented as a variable using which uh, letter, and we represent period using T. And um, we measure that, so B, and we measure that since it's the time for one wave to pass, as we mentioned here, uh, we're going to measure that in seconds, F. And wavelength, I forgot to put that here, but that's D, oh, this is wrong. 17. Velocity is V. That's a, should be a C there. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can go in a little bit better for these questions. All right. So how many waves are in the graphic uh, above? So we have one wave there. We have two waves, three waves. We have three waves there waves. What is the period of one single wave? So one wave, so the time for one wave is 0 0.02 seconds. So the period is the time for one wave, so 0 0.02 seconds. Where are you? E. Right there. Okay. What is the frequency of the wave? Frequency is, now if you look at your notes from Monday, frequency is equal to 1 over the period. So the period we just calculated to be, or determined from the uh, graphic to be 0 0.02, so 
So if I take 1 divided by that number, I'm going to get a frequency, and I believe that frequency should be uh, 50 hertz. 50 hertz. G. So if we do the math, F equals 1 over T. T is the period. What was the period of our wave? It's the amount of time for one wave. That's 0 0.02. Okay. And the amount of time for that one wave uh, represents the period. So if I do 1 divided by 0 0.02, I should get 50. And that's G. <clears throat> and you do the same thing here for that one, so I'm going to skip that. Uh, if water vibrates up and down six times each second, and the distance between the crest is three meters, then uh, that's information given, so now I have to look at these questions. What is the frequency? So the frequency is how often you're oscillating or vibrating uh, per second, and here it tells you you vibrate up and down six times a second. So your frequency should be just 6 hertz. Wavelength, what is the wavelength of the wave? That's the distance between two crests or two similar points in a wave. So your wavelength is equal to 3.5 meters here. All right, 3.5. What is the speed of the wave? The speed V equals, and we looked at the wave equation again in the notes from Monday, so frequency times lambda. All right, frequency we have here is 6, and um, your wavelength, lambda, is 3.5. You multiply those together to get some number as meters per second. And your period is just your uh, time for one wave. Now, if you have the frequency, you can determine the period, because we said before that, frequency is 1 over period. If that's true, then what is also true, we could also say it as period equals 1 over the frequency. We could also write it that way. All right. So if you have the frequency, we have 6, then our period is 1 divided by 6 seconds. Uh, 1 divided by 6 seconds is our period. Uh, and so then you, once you calculate those numbers for 29 through 32, you just pick your answer from up here. And let's go on to 33. Very similar, 33 is um, to 31. Right? So you consider a wave with a wavelength of 5.7 meters. Frequency is 6.5. So calculate the speed. And the speed, we're using the words speed and velocity interchangeably here, but we'll find out later on in the year that we are going to actually distinguish between those two words at some point. Let's see here. So your frequency is 6.5 hertz, and your wavelength is 5.7. So you could just do that calculation. And again, your number is going to be up here somewhere. Oh, I forgot to put those, uh, forgot to put options in there, but it's, it's not a big deal. Okay, I'll fix that. Um, and then here you have the same thing, but they're asking you to calculate wavelength. So you have a velocity or a speed. So you have this. You have a frequency. So they're asking, what is your wavelength? What is your wavelength? Okay, on the back, so we've, we've gone through two sections of the test, and section one is kind of like basic level, basic vocabulary uh, and basic concepts. Level two is a little bit more rigorous and in maybe interpreting graphs or um, doing some calculations. And three is more like reasoning and just thinking through um, what the different concepts mean and then um, explaining those uh, or using uh, your understanding of those concepts to under, or to explain what you see. So for 35, you're going to describe what is happening to the period, frequency, energy, and wavelength during the attack phase. And the attack phase is this phase. And here we have uh, a pulse from a synthesizer, all right, uh, that makes music. Um, and the attack phase is, is this phase here. And let's talk about the period. The period is the 
time of one wave. So here's the time of one wave. And during that, it looks to me like the individual wave peaks aren't not really changing much uh, with respect to one another. So here I would say that the period is really not changing. Frequency, which is how many waves per second or how smushed together the waves are, they stay about you know, the same distance from one another throughout. So the frequency is not really changing. But the amplitude is going up. So if the amplitude is going up, that does say something about the energy. Uh, and so I want you to think back about how energy and amplitude are related. Wavelength. Wavelength is, again, how far the waves are, how long the waves are. And here, if you look, it's pretty constant throughout. So really, throughout these questions, I'm asking you, what's happening in attack? You know, that's the first question. What's happening, so the attack phase, what's happening during decay? So when this goes down, what's changing about the wave? What's happening here? Is anything changing uh, about the wave here? So that'll be the third question here. And at the very end, I say, okay, if the source of the wave started to vibrate faster, what would happen to the period, the frequency, the energy, and the wavelength throughout? Would any of those things change um, with respect to, um, you know, this wave at a higher frequency? Or, excuse me, with respect to it at a, a regular frequency, which is now. Okay. And that's the test in 12 minutes. Now let me figure out how to turn this off.